what I'm going to do, I have several options I can how I can view this. What I have right now is basically the default. It goes to bounding box. I can choose which color I'm showing this particular instancing in. Uh, green feels good because it's a tree. But what I could also do is I can go to head and page this to shaded solid. So this is really showing me directly what my what my setup is going to look like instead of just a bunch of points or just a bunch of boxes. Now, I may want to go back to that because of OpenGL refresh or it starts to get heavy as it goes on. Currently, it's set up to item pivot and in local mode. So I can move this around locally. I can rotate this around locally, treat it just like a regular object. But anything that happens to the original object does not affect my instance. That's important because sometimes you want that and sometimes you don't. So let me go ahead and zero this back out. This is just a single tree. Very quickly, very easily, I can change this to an array. So let's go ahead and do a rectangular array. We don't need any on the Y because we're doing a little group here. Again, we're going to have spacing because this is going to clobber in on itself. So let's go ahead and there's 12 by 12 real quick. And as you can see here, again, I'm moving this. This is now a group of trees. 12 by 12, quick math, right? We're already pushing the what would what would be capable on certain laptops. Now, again, additional controls. One of the things that has uh, has been improved in Lightwave 11.5 over 11 is as I add objects to this to this list. Let me just quickly, very simply, very silly, throw a cube in here. So I'm going to add a cube into my grouping. Now, a few of my trees are, are cubes. In 11, we only had uh, the control for all of the objects that were put into the instance. In 11.5, I've now got the ability to this top control here in the generation still affects all the objects in my list, but now I have independent controls. So down here, I can tell this, again, be local. And if I change my scale, of my cube, it doesn't change the scale of my tree. That's pretty important because I don't want, say, any of the bushes that I've added into this forest to be as large as my trees or my trees as small as my bushes. So I have independent individual controls. Let me go ahead and remove this particular cube because I want to show you a few other things. So let me uh, remove that, go back to just trees. Some of the things that come into play, especially dealing with trees or even dealing with cars, maybe I'm doing a, a, a parking lot for, a, uh, for a, an architectural visualization. All of these now have the same color. That's not that great. So let me go ahead and take this into my surface editor. Let me pull open my nodes and let me just show you real quickly how this, is, how this can be set up. I'm just going to unplug this. This is a gradient. So what I'm feeding in is I'm feeding in my instance info, the instances that are being created, into a gradient. I'm just going to change this gradient to something that's like a bright green, and let's take it down to a dark green. A dark green. There we go. Something like this. Now as I plug this into the color gradient, or into the color input on my surfacing node, we're not going to directly see this in OpenGL. That's why we love working in VPR. In VPR, I can now see this as I'm doing, as I'm setting up, and as I'm tweaking my surfaces. And now we see those trees now don't match in color. They're actually pulling those colors from that gradient that I have set up. This will give me a perfect opportunity to change. Let's go random rotation on our trees. And let's go ahead and add just a little scaling in there as well. So let's go 80 and maybe up as far as 120 is where I meant to go, 120. Now, very quickly, very easily, you see, well, I just chose a gradient, a light green and a dark green. What if you threw in other colors as well? Thank you for asking. <laughs> so if I double click on this very quickly, if I just throw in here, let's throw in a yellow and let's throw in a red. And now we're starting to talk about fall colors. And just that quickly, I've now created, my, my, my thing is now into fall colors. Change this other green, maybe darken it a little bit. 
because it's really shining out there. So, instance quick on the on the radio on the random array and colorization. Now, again, I'm not limited to just doing it this way. Let me go ahead and take out my uh, black background and let's just drop out of this again. So what I want to show now is we've got more options, especially when it comes to dealing with doing trees, doing things. This was just built on, on the one null. Well, we don't typically do a lot with nulls. Uh, although nulls are our friends, we all love nulls. Nulls are the unsung heroes of the CG world. I'm going to go ahead and create me a ground plane. And I'm going to create a fairly large one. Let's go 300 meters by 300 meters. And let's go ahead and give ourselves quite a few segments. So this is going to be something a little bit more maybe to the point. This surface now, I'm going to drag that instance or I'm going to put that instance right on top of it again. And let's put in the maple tree. Let's go local. And instead of item pivot, let's go to surface. And let's say we've got 1,500 trees. Change this again to texture shaded solid. And now my trees are actually growing onto the surface of this plane. And 1,500 ob objects uh, getting in there with the fully textured mode might have been not so wise on this particular video card. Let's go ahead and go back to uh, bounding box because this will sh this will show us a little bit faster. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take that ground plane object and let's go into the deformation tab and throw in a displacement map really fast. Procedural texture, 10, 10, uh, not 10 meters. Let's go. Uh, that was a 300 meter. Let's go 120 meters and let's increase our Texture value, not that much. There we go, something like this. Let's drag it down. And so as you can see, the trees are actually growing on the undulation of my, uh, of my ground plane. Again, this is one of those things that you would, really, you would really find in doing architectural, landscape, uh, you know, a flyover of, of you know, any kind of forest area things of this nature. You can uh, directly in the instancer, you can tell it that what I want to do is my rotation. Let's go ahead and align to the normals so that as these are growing on the, on the hillside, maybe they point in. Maybe that's not what we want. Trees growing off to the side, well, you know, who knows. But uh, certainly by having that option, certain plants might do that. Grass might do that. Uh, some small bushes would want to do that. They wouldn't want to grow sideways. So it'll actually read the normals of the surface and grow those things as we're going. Now, I had made mention of doing a parking lot. Let me just quickly load in an object here. This object, one near and dear to my heart. I love 57 Chevy. So what I'm just going to do here is use itself as my instance generator. So I'm going to add itself to itself. So I'm instancing itself. Doesn't this sound like Inception? Anyway, could anyone see that movie but me? Okay, just making sure, just making sure. All right, so what I'm going to do now again, I'm going to go back to the rectangular array. Again, I'm not, I'm not in Japan, so I'm not stacking these cars one on top of one another. And let's go ahead and go, let's go about 20 meters, nah, too far, 12. We can, uh, we can bring our X spacing back in. I love the interactivity. We just kind of scrub this in, scrub this in. Now, one thing that you saw me do was you saw, oh, well, you controlled the, uh, the rotation by random. Well. We don't necessarily maybe do random rotations on cars if they're in a parking lot. I don't know, some Sunday afternoon at a Walmart maybe gets kind of creative during the rush hour. People fighting for parking places. So what I might want to do is I might want to rotate these with a little bit more control. 
So very easily, just going to go ahead and throw this in so we can see which way these guys are pointing. I have access right here to my node editor. My node editor adds all kinds of possibilities into this thing. So by, by opening this up, one of the things that is such a, a lovely, lovely thing is that I can actually load in, uh, load in some nodes that I've already created, if I can remember where to load them. Da, 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 da. Import, there we go. Um, import nodes. I have created myself this. This is very simple. What this is, again, this is my instance node. This, this is going to, you know, which, which instance? Which one am I talking about? I'm talking about this one. This is my instance node. Now, this is a gradient. This gradient is set up with starting off with its alpha value at zero. And then halfway through, its next value is set to 314%. Quick, why did I set it to 314%? All you math guys say, oh, I know why. It's because 180 degrees in radians is 3.14. I'll help you out there. All right, so, so this is set up for, gradi uh, for radians. Take my vector, plug it into my rotation, and now, as soon as we get an update here into OpenGL, Let's see. Nodes, I'm using nodes. Instance generator, right. Rotation, I now change to uniform. And now some of the cars are facing 180 degrees, some of the cars are facing the, the way I had them set. 